NATO is stepping up its presence near Russia's borders, deploying fighter jets, warships, and more troops in the Baltic region. Moves designed to reassure NATO members unnerved by Moscow's action in Ukraine. James Bazan, the parliamentary secretary of the Minister of Defense, joins me from Winnipeg to explain why Canada answered the call. Mr. Bazan, top diplomats from the United States, Europe, uh, Russia and the Ukraine reached an agreement apparently to try to ease the crisis in Ukraine. Calls on all sides to refrain from violence, intimidation or provocative actions. So why are we sending fighter jets if the goal is to de-escalate the situation in Ukraine? Well, that is still the ultimate goal, Bob, is, is, is that we do have a de-escalation, that, that Russia stops their aggression, that they stop their uh, um, provocative uh, military maneuvers that they're doing not only outside of Ukraine, but what we're seeing on the ground with special op forces uh, overtaking government buildings throughout the, the net school blast. Uh, so it is important that, that uh, those talks continue and that we move diplomatically to, to avoid a full out military uh, incursion. But but with that said, as the Prime Minister said on Thursday, uh, we need to uh, still be very concerned about what is happening uh, with Russia in Ukraine. Uh, there is a number of NATO states that are quite concerned uh, about uh, Russia's uh, uh, continued aggression and uh, uh, some of those NATO members are former uh, member states of the, of the former Soviet Union and uh, have legitimate concerns and of course under Article 5 we have responsibilities as a partner of, partner of NATO to provide uh, support and uh, most uh, and all, all member states have committed now to bolstering uh, military uh, assets within the region, especially in, 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 in Central and Eastern Europe. And uh, Canada is stepping up and doing our part because we have been steadfast in our support of NATO and steadfast in our support for the people of Ukraine. And do we expect that if Putin doesn't rein himself in that we're going to get a lot more tougher sanctions and possibly seeing Canadian ground troops move to Europe? Well, I think we're going to continue to move on the sanction side. The, 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 the you know, member states of NATO are, are quite clear in, in protecting NATO states. Uh, so those countries are the ones that we are committed to uh, from a military standpoint, that an attack on one is an attack on all. Uh, so we will continue to move with our allies uh, in lockstep in, in further isolating uh, President Putin, uh, the kleptocrats that surround him in the Kremlin, and, of course, uh, continue to, to bring up forward the appropriate measures to hopefully de-escalate the situation uh, in Ukraine and uh, other member states who, who are also have the same concerns that we're seeing uh, in Ukraine. And I, I particularly raise the, the issue of Moldova and what's happening in, in Transnistria. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Brazan. Appreciate you uh, talking to us. H Happy Easter, Bob.